Ministry for Extraordinary Maritime Engineering, Chief Dieter's Personal Logs. I just heard the news straight from the top. This war is almost over. This saddens me greatly. I have so many ideas for new ships and weapon systems. Just yesterday I drew up a design for a battleship with 22 inch guns. I have a sketch for a 26 inch homing torpedo. I want a battle cruiser to get to 50 knots. When a nation is at war, there is a large budget for the military. Technological breakthroughs are made. Novel ideas, which normally take years to be accepted for testing, are almost instantly accepted. A war creates huge opportunities for an engineer and researcher like myself. But perhaps it's not all bad. Even though the end of the war is still very hush-hush, somebody outside the highest levels of government has already gotten wind of it. I was approached for a job at an organization called Spectre. They were looking for a chief researcher. I don't know much about them yet, but from what I've been told, this job could be an excellent opportunity to explore more weapon systems, since memes funding is about to run dry. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 7, the most likely last episode of this series. Uh, it's been a brief one so far, but it turns out that Dieter's designs from the uh, Ministry for Extraordinary Maritime Engineering, or MEME, are actually working out much better than I, and probably the British with me, had expected. Let's go and have a battle with just the Mackenzie and two destroyers against the battlecruiser Inflexible, heavy cruiser Europa, light cruiser Indus, and destroyer Nestor. We've seen that the Mackenzie can deliver a lot of damage. We just haven't seen her take on anything heavier than a cruiser, so I'm interested to see how well she's going to do against a battle cruiser. Let's see how inflexible that ship is, because you might want to give a little bit away when the 19, sorry, when the 18 inch shells start coming your way. All right, destroyers, normal formation. Um, not going to put the dance moves on just yet. We have seen what this thing does. It's not necessarily good. It's not necessarily good. Um, I suppose you're the battlecruiser? Yeah, you are. We got you targeted and pretty nicely dialed in as well. 4.3%, second salvo. I'll take it. Now, where are the rest of them? The heavy's on the left flank of the battlecruiser returning... Wow, that was a big wave. Look at that. Old bow went under. Uh, she's turning seemingly to follow the battlecruiser. There's the lights and there's the DD. In the, in the current search and stances, I'm more concerned about these torpedo launchers than I am about the heavy cruiser. Oh wow, they've hit the Mackenzie already. That is one accurate or lucky battlecruiser. Nine inch guns going off against a different target. I don't want that. We're just going to be targeting the battlecruiser. 18. Yeah, you can hit out to 18. Oh, that looks pretty juicy. <coughs> yeah. No, just short. But we're getting there. Look at that 9-incher. 7.5% already. Very good. Alright, Mackenzie. Let's have a go. And take down a British battlecruiser. British battlecruisers have a tendency to blow up violently. Um, I wonder if they're going to do that same thing right now. I have the DDs. Well, no. I'm going to move to a position in front of the battle cruiser because, as we have seen in previous episodes, they don't really make for good screening ships. Their ability or inability to detect torpedoes, unless the torpedo is right on top of them, is going to prove costly. AKA, it'll probably end up killing the ship. Mackenzie and the. Uh Battlecruiser are currently slugging it out. They hit me again. They got a lot of guns, but I have bigger guns. That was an 18-inch hit, mid-belt. <coughs> right through. So they're flooding. And despite their salvos of, uh, what is that, 12, 15-inch, I think? No, 12, 12-inch. 12 it's not that big. It's just, well, <laughs> it is just 12-inch shells. It's not that big. No, they are pretty sizable. You really don't want to get hit by a 12-inch shell, whatever type of ship you're operating in. But if something is going to get hit, I would much appreciate it for it to be the Mackenzie. 
rather than a destroyer, because they're most definitely not going to survive that. Now, the battle cruiser might... Oh, crap, really? The smoke screen is not sufficient to cover the Mackenzie? Yes, it is now. Target inside smoke. That's what I was hoping to see. These guys have plenty torpedo range, so they're most likely already opening up. So in... Well, probably not too much time, I'm going to have to do a pretty violent turn to starboard. Because I really don't want to end up too close to them. I'm no longer in smoke, am I? No. That battle cruiser has suffered quite a bit of damage and stability. Okay, let's start turning. <coughs> Even though it will set off our accuracy. And, on top of that, we might not be able to fire the bow turrets anymore. But it's better than getting hit by a torpedo. Boom! Rudder damaged. Engine out. That was another main belt pen for 271 damage. The rudder's been repaired, but the engine has not. And since battlecruisers rely on speed for their life, it could be the end of the battlecruiser. It's just going to snowball from here. That is, if I can still turn the turret far enough. The A turret. Which I think I might not be able to. No. I have to angle a little more. That ought to do it. There. <clears throat> That's the angle that we need. DDs, just provide escort duties. Just keep busy. And essentially, <laughs> provide a distraction. Um, chances of hitting these are not that good. We got the Nestor over there and the light cruiser as well. They just torpedoed the battleship not too long ago. Let's do a hard over. Just to be on the safe side. Let's do a gradual turn with the DDs. There's the torpedo. That probably came from the light cruiser. Swing the A turret all the way around. Yep, there's a whole swarm of those. Battle cruiser 91%. Uh, do I want to just headshot the Indus? Because that is potentially my biggest concern. Yeah, let's let's go for the Indus. Especially the 9-incher should be able to weaken it. Oh, now you start vaping again. Crap. Okay. Partial pen as the 12-inch shell hits the battleship again. Barely doing any damage. Indus might have launched again. Let's do a gradual turn. Heavy cruiser status. Europa has not yet launched. They have the range, but they're not quite using it yet. DDs, carry on. Destroyed a torpedo launcher on the Indus, probably using a... Oh, I was going to say 9-inch, but that was a 4-inch shell. And... Oh, I was hoping that that would hit. Nestor has also launched. Maintain your gradual course change, but let's sharpen it a bit. Yep, there. That was a hit. 18 inch, 873 damage. It once again feels a little bit... Ooh. <laughs> like cruelty to small ships, I was going to say. Uh, the Indus just got hit with one 18 inch shell. It penetrated her main belt and did well over 3,000 points of damage. Causing the immediate destruction of the light cruiser. So we can do the same thing to the DD. Uh, this is going to be a bit more of a slow death, I think. Well, not that slow. Europa has finally decided to start torpedoing. The Inflexible does not have that luxury. Let's turn. DD's turn. Smoke up. <coughs> Come on, blow away the Nestor, will ya? I need to put the mains on the Inflexible. No, it's just... 
it is really appealing to blow this thing away with 18 inch. It just is so satisfying. You see those really high damage numbers. Alright. Uh, we're going to start torpedoing the inflexible if the V11 would like to oblige. You got... That was not one of mine. The heavy cruiser torpedoed the Nestor. Ammo detonation. Oh, you poor thing. Uh, there are a few more torpedoes in the water. Let's blow up the inflexible. How much can the inflexible deal to me? None. Cool. Uh, in reverse, pretty decent chance. I'm going to chance it with high explosive. Because I think that high explosive, under the right circumstances, this being them, can cause a ton of damage to the inflexible. Oh yeah. 430 damage, and you just take off a huge chunk of structural integrity damage. Or sorry, structural integrity of the ship. Torpedoes away from the 11 and the 3. We're going to have you guys disengage. You know what, we're going to switch fire to the Europa. Reason being, I think the inflexible is not a threat. It's a bit of an insult when your battle cruiser is considered not a threat. And your heavy cruiser is. But these guys have to the torpedoes. Look at that, that's just doink. <laughs> you can still see the shell ricocheting. Uh, these guys have the torpedoes. They have shown willingness to use them. In fact, a great willingness to use them. Even in the face of a friendly ship in a position between you and the target. Now, here comes a lot of death. Yep. 1,354 damage. The ship is flooding in one, two, three, four, five compartments. Three engines are knocked out, so all of her water pumping capability is down. Save for their auxiliary engine. They got one of those. But I doubt that little engine is going to save this ship. Now, as a benefit, Europa, being out of this fight with a Sonar 3 array, is not going to give as much warning about these torpedoes. The Inflexible, however, might have spotted them, because they too have Sonar 3. Hmm. few bulkheads. Yeah, this is a, <clears throat> a bit of an unfair fight. Although I am, once again, surprised that a 54,000 ton battleship being, I think, the lowest displacement battleship I can build is this effective. Boom. Yeah, you're done. Oh, dummy. You're not turning the right way, Inflexible. You're not turning the right way. Europa's out. Because now the Inflexible might very well find itself in a position to get torpedoed by the others. They're making a heavy turn. Sharp turn to port. Is it enough? Or are you just opening yourself up to the attack? Yeah, no, you're... <laughs> Could have been me, this battle cruiser. You're opening yourself up right to the torpedoes. One, two. Okay, that's going to flood out their rudder compartment, so the rudder is knocked out. Oh, shit. As I'm partying at the death of the Inflexible, I have a bunch of torpedoes coming in on the Mackenzie. That was the last parting gift from the Europa. And I didn't catch it. You guys probably did. Mackenzie's going maximum over. I'm gonna push that rudder right back. Maybe, with her unbalanced rudder, I can do this, but it's gonna be close. No, I'm going to eat one or two, I think. Yeah, there's one. Could have been a hell of a lot worse. This is why I prefer unbalanced rudders. <clears throat> now, let's uh, cause the final destruction of the inflexible. There you go. 700 damage. Inflexible's turning bow in. That's not going to save her. Not against 18-inch high explosive. We don't care about these things. There goes another 10% structural integrity. You gonna... <laughs> oh, it just bounces right off. It can really not hurt this shit. 35,000 ton battle cruiser. 108 million cannot hurt the Mackenzie. Which arguably is a lot more expensive. Yep, I can hurt you, alright. It's a lot more expensive and a lot more heavily armored. 
You compare armors, we have 15 inch on the main belt, 9 inch on the fore belt. Currently those are the most important numbers because that's what we're shooting. And I have 118% quality bonus. So effectively, let's say 31 inch and uh, the, what's that, 19 inch or just, just above that. Oh, sorry, just around that. This guy has an 8.8 .8 inch armor belt plus 110%. Four belt is only 3.6 plus 110. So let's be graceful and say 7.6 to 8 inches of frontal armor. At a 1,000 meter range, we don't care about 8 inches of armor because we can pen 60 inches. And uh, the Inflexible is not having a great time with it. One more good hit and she might be dead. Because her structural integrity... <laughs> Her structural integrity is out. I just am very amused by all of these shells ricocheting off of the Mackenzie. That's 9 inch. Come on, Mackenzie. You got this. Hold on. That 8 incher looks to be out of commission. I did see some warnings about the ship not having all of her structure, or sorry, not having all of her secondaries anymore. But apparently that was it. That was the secondary that they destroyed. Boom! Dead. Structural integrity reduced on the inflexible. And she died. Now the British were already suing for peace, so I guess they're going to scream even louder. But there is another battle up ahead. A convoy. Whose convoy? Their convoy. Ooh. No. Pass. Uh, we got the Heavy Cruiser Blucher. Uh, the V-10 and the V-6 against the Courageous, which is their last... That's one of their last two battlecruisers. I am not interested in this fight. Because the... Well... No, we're going to do it. Because the Blucher is very good at taking down transports. It's not fast. At 35, th 35 knots, it's not that good. But show me a transport and I will kill it. Where's your battlecruiser at? You're 23 clicks out. Okay. <clears throat> this is your target. We finally get to see the heavy cruiser class in action. It's a very, very lightly armed heavy cruiser. Dual 6 inches. That's it. But the 4 inches out to 10.5, sorry, 10.3 kilometers can fire every 6 seconds. And they, intended with the 3 inch and the 2 inches that I had on the remaining spots of the ship, including. Not to forget, these two <laughs> single two inchers, they were there to perfectly balance out the ship. Without those, we would have had a four weight offset. Anyway, these guys are definitely going to be capable of dealing a lot of damage to transports. It's not strictly what I designed the ship for, because this ship was designed to take out destroyers. It has a very, very small turning circle of 224, which is well, it's almost less than a destroyer. But the amount of damage that this ship can rack up against small unarmored ships is insane. Those 4-inch guns, look at that. This thing just gets chewed up in seconds. Of course, being at 5 times speed helps. <clears throat> Let's turn over to starboard, allow more of our guns to fire. We've sunk two transports, there goes a third, simply because it was getting overwhelmed. There goes another. Good lord. This guy. This guy. <laughs> Sheer amount of damage that these cruisers can do. Against this target. <laughs> That needs to be added against this target. Against bigger targets, like the battlecruiser, I am completely incapable of inflicting any kind of damage. Well, maybe I can burn it down, but those 12 inchers were not effective against the battleship, but are looking extremely intimidating for this heavy cruiser. Even though I have a modicum of armor, it's not really something I would like to test. There goes the Dido. Okay, that thing will probably be toast in a minute. Kestrel goes down. Superb. Any shell that doesn't hit will hit the Surly. 
And we're done. <laughs> that was less than 10 minutes. See ya. I am not going to stick around to see if I can engage that battle cruiser. Bye. So, Blücher, very effective. Because that was in the span of 10 minutes. 21,000 damage. Even the destroyers did 7k combined. That's pretty damn good. No, sorry, they did 5. Hmm. Note how much the 4 inchers did. They did a lot more than the 6 inchers. Unarmored target, easy kill. V6 is okay, V10, not great. Now, I was hoping that this was going to be a fairly long campaign. That I would see designs, uh, well, more meme designs over a longer period of time. But I had not expected to finish this campaign in a mere seven episodes. But that's exactly what's happening. That is how apparently quickly you can kick the British out of the North Sea and wherever else they happen to be. Oh, we even had fires in the Irish Sea. <clears throat> um, and you just win. It's a bit sad. Because I have been playing for less than a year. I started in Jan 1940, it's now December. Oh, we're not done yet. Oh, again? Oh, the Blue is out on patrol again. <laughs> it's the same ship. The courageous. No, pass. Come on, Brits. Do you not want peace yet? Oh, a battleship. A battleship, yes. I want this fight. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have the Mecklenburg and the Tusovka Dmitri do exactly what they were designed to do, which is hunt down the Observer, the Swordsman, and the Pioneer. While the Kaiser Wilhelm der Zweite, I don't know, uh, the second is going to take out the Majestic. And with the destruction of one of our capital ships, one of their five battleships, that is, we should be able to force the Brits to make peace. A battleship fight. Now you have my attention. Alright, heavy cruisers. Uh, you're going to have to move ahead. You're going to have to move ahead. Don't torp anybody. Try not to get torped either. Kaiser, where's the enemy? There's the enemy. Is this the first time we're actually seeing a battleship of theirs? It is, isn't it? 12 19 inch guns? Good lord. Okay. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> that's a bit more firepower than I'm bringing. 12 19 inchers? Yeah. Okay, they're not fucking around. That's gonna make this very interesting. It's not a good fight for the Kaiser Wilhelm. I might lose this fight. But I would actually welcome that, because that would make it a bit more interesting. I want the DD not to get too close yet. I first want to eliminate their escorts. Because once they're down, I might be able to torpedo this battleship. Getting close to this thing is generally not a good idea, because it has 12... Sorry, 12 per side 6-inch guns. 18 3-inch guns. 12 2-inch guns of uh, 4 times 3 yeah, just basically a whole lot of secondaries. <laughs> and I've been hit. And damaged. How dare you. How dare you hit my beautiful ship. Dieter is going to be unhappy. Now these guys, the Mecklenburg and counterpart to Sofka Dmitri, both have very good sonar arrays. And I'm expecting both of these ships to perform the duty of uh, anti-torpedo ship. Not that they're going to shoot the torpedoes out of the water. But they will notify me of any inbound torpedoes. Hopefully with plenty of time for me to do something about it. The British battleship has wisely gone broadside. Providing a ton more firepower. Because now they can bring all of those 12 19 inches to bear. I do wonder what they had to sacrifice. Because these turrets are heavy. 
they got a lot of secondaries. So they either don't have a lot of survivability or speed. It's going to be either. Hello, light cruiser. Allow me to introduce myself. Mecklenburg. Ow. That was right on the nose. Really? What did I do? V7 didn't do anything yet. Yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Mecklenburg. Yeah, I'm not gonna queue the dance moves. I don't trust the dance moves. We got torpedoes. If you sail straight, you should be fine. The battleship. Jeez, there's a lot of them. The battleship should be fine. Yeah. Focus fire on that. Good lord, how am I gonna dodge all of that? Just... Just go here, I guess. Hard over. Turn. That's it. We need this light cruiser destroyed. With haste. Because that ship will do that again. If we let them. These destroyers escorting the battleship are basically picket ships, sonar ships. I need those gone. I don't know if I can pen that ship. Not yet. Should be able to learn that pretty quick. Wow, that bounced off! 18 inch shells ricocheting off the British battleship. Now you have my full attention. Turn starboard. Turn starboard. Bring all the 4 inch guns to bear against that light cruiser. Rip it to bits. You're gonna go with high explosive because I do not... Fuck's sake. I do not trust this ship. Oh, that was beautiful. I do not trust this ship not to shrug off all of my AP. Ah, oh, we have the ship identified. Here, battleship, majestic. They did lose one of their turrets. X turret has been destroyed. That was the high explosive hit. Interestingly. Um, <clears throat> what you got? You're pretty fast. 30 knots? With an extremely good turning circle. Torpedoing this thing is going to be difficult. Few bulkheads. There you go. 2,000 crew members. I have 1,649. 11 inch main armor belt. Plus 108%. So you got a what? Citadel 5. What do you not have? You got group 3. Why? Interesting. Anti-Flood 3, Citadel 5, Anti-Torp 5. Super heavy shells, reduced ammo for torps. Okay, so apparently you do have torps. 2 powder 2, TNT 2, so that's what they've been saving on. Standard reload, electrical turrets, coincidence range finder 4, generation 1 radar, advanced radio, and sonar 2. Whew. Okay. This is going to be very interesting. <clears throat> I really like the fact that I can blow up one of their turrets with ease. But that might have been a fluke. I'm not sure if I can do that again. Now, I have another option when it comes to dealing with the Majestic. I could try and burn it down. With the 4 inchers. Because the attention from the Majestic is squared solely on the heavy cruiser. Sorry, on the battleship and the destroyer. It's just the two inches that are going to be tickling the Mecklenburg. But I don't really consider that a threat. Ah, crap, I'm still dodging torpedoes. I cannot go starboard again. Here's the torpedo. I have to go starboard again. Ooh, that's going to be close, isn't it? I need to buy me a bit more time. Okay, destroyer. Come back here. Majestic firing at the Kaiser Wilhelm in the turn. Missed. Whew. 
have been pretty devastating. I have a pretty good chance to pen. Average ricochet chance. Hmm. No, I think that torpedo is going to hit me on the stern. Sadly. Yeah, I'm going to get hit on the stern. Fine. Damage to the main tower. That's good. That's really good. Pioneer starting to flood. The sheer amount of damage that this ship is taking, or sheer amount of hits. It's probably pretty alarming to that light cruiser. The observer is still reloading her torps. Pioneer is flooding to 60%. Structural integrity is dropping. There aren't any more torpedoes in the water that I know of. Pioneer is still my biggest concern. I have to turn away from her. Because she has the potential to use her other side's torpedo launchers. They're not locked onto my heavy cruiser yet. That can change in an instant. Destroyer, 9.8 kilometer range. Mm. Angle is terrible. Whatever, it might force the Majestic to turn. And thereby we can throw off their guns. Okay, you can use auto select. You can put the secondaries on the sword. Actually, yeah, put the secondaries on the swordsman. Put the main guns on the pioneer. Mid belt, pen, 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 pen. Even the two inches are starting to do a lot of damage. Mecklenburg. This is what the Mecklenburg was designed to do. Murder destroyers. And it's doing it with a passion. This destroyer is starting to take hits, fires, flooding. She's in a pretty bad spot and it's going to be progressively worse soon. Did you neutralize one of my torpedo launchers? No. Okay, good. Battleship status, 78%. You're fine. Generally. Well, we're going to have a collision here. Some slight mismanagement. Focus on that. Oh, you dick. You torpedoed the battleship again. It's just... Oh, it's a uh, dual torpedo launcher. Okay, it's not that bad. <clears throat> Could have been worse. Could have been the whole spread. Let's just focus on the DDs. Since we're so close, we can use virtually every gun on the ship. Majestic's turning over to port. It's pretty sad. It means that all of those torpedoes will miss. Wait. Oh. I see how it is. Okay, there goes the swordsman. That's one of their destroyers dead. Next is observer. Kill that. They're still loading. They're not a threat. This, this thing is, though. Mecklenburg, that's yours. Explosive is fine. Yeah, go. The Majestic is down to 80%, but still very much combat capable. Come on, eliminate that destroyer. Look at this guy. The whole ship's on fire. She's not going to be observing much. On ship structural integrity 78 versus their 77. Okay, we're fairly even. I think my torpedoes are. I'm not actually sure where they are. Here. That's what I was checking. I don't want to have the Tusovka run into my own torpedoes. That'd be a poor display. Um, let's do a full turn to starboard. Slow you down to full speed. Bring your guns to bear. And also throw off the torpedoes from the Pioneer. Because they definitely are coming to me. Why is she not dead? There you go. Job done. <clears throat> Alright. Let's start burning down this battleship. 
I can really not pen a whole lot. But I can make their life very miserable. Surely by the amount of fires that the ship could set. If I can pen that. No, I can pen their superstructure. I can put their superstructure on fire. And here comes more 18 inch high explosive. And that can do a lot more damage. 64% structural left. B turret's been badly damaged. Mecklenburg, finish it up already. Majestic is taking quite a bit of damage here. Of course, the two inches are not doing a whole lot of damage, and neither are the six and the fours. The fires are helping. We got currently quite a few of those going around. That ship is miserable. Boom. 39% structural. At this angle? We're gonna switch to the auto select. Potentially let the AP take care of it. Although the sh No, she's turning away. <clears throat> Not doing that. New torpedo to battleship. Why are you still here? Sheesh. They're fantastic to deal with destroyers. Light cruisers, they're taking too long. I probably need to go with 7 or 8 inch guns if I would build the ship again. I need some more firepower. Structural down to 1%. Yeah, you're done. Okay, Mecklenburg, join the fight. Tuzovka. <clears throat> How are you doing? 100% structural. You've done 5,000 damage. Not against the battleship, you haven't. No, you're helping as best you can. I can respect that. Majestic's down to 30% structural. DD can come back in. No torps. Torpedoes in the water. Hard to port. <coughs> Maintain pressure with the high explosive. That's it. Three engines are out. Where are you at? I got 10 clicks out. Okay, fine. Uh, I do not want to ram that ship. 14% structural, the whole bow is on fire. Kaiser Wilhelm might know something about that. And there goes another part of the ship on fire. That's more towards the stern. The Majestic might make a ram attempt here. Although the AI doesn't generally do that. I gotta say, for the design, it's pretty nice. It's an expensive ship, sure. It cost, what, 160... 157. Which makes them still cheaper than mine. While probably providing more firepower, but on a more fragile platform. And I think that is the problem. Point one. You're done. Majestic doesn't have the staying power that the Kaiser Wilhelm does, because she doesn't have the armor. And that cost her the battle. And that cost the British a battleship. So, that's another 3,000 victory points versus 75 for the Brits. Yes, I'm gonna need to fix up my battleship, but it's not as bad as the British having to not have a battleship anymore. What is happening here? We're building new ships, are we though? Ah, we're winning. The British government desperately asks us, to, asks us to sign a peace treaty. Should we accept? Yeah. The reason why I'm ending this campaign this way is that I don't have 26 months time to build more ships. It would just be a whole lot of clicking through battles that would just be boring. Um, we're already winning. I very much doubt we're still blockaded. Although the power projection... No, sorry, we, we are blockaded. Which makes it all the more interesting that the British want us to sign a peace treaty. Anyway, um, building meme ships was a lot more difficult than I'd expected. 
it turned out that building all sorts of different designs, such as I tried a heavy armor build, didn't work. I just couldn't put the parts on it that I needed to make the ship combat effective. Building a glass cannon is an exercise in futility because it's a ship that might provide a ton of firepower, but if it gets hit once or twice, it'll either violently explode or flood. So that's out. Um, light cruisers like the, the Minstrel Duck Coastal class doing 16 knots, but very heavily armored, basically useless. It's more difficult than I thought to build meme ships. So the next campaign is going to be a bit more serious, and it should be here either tomorrow or otherwise in a few days. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you for following along, and I shall see you soon for the next one.